Hey guys, Matt from Mystery History here. So today I wanted to share with you a confession. A confession by this man. His name is Dr. Allah Shaheen, and he is one of the world's leading Egyptologists. He is also head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department. He rubs shoulders with top Egyptian government figures and members of the Egyptian State of Antiquities. If anyone knows about Egypt's most inner-kept secrets, it's this guy. In December 2010, he was hosting a conference to a select group of delegates about ancient Egyptian architecture when he let something slip. He admitted to being complicit in the covering up of an astonishing secret. He has since retracted the statement and is now denying he ever made it, however, during the conference a handful of press reporters were present. They all ran the same story, shortly after the conference all quoting the same remark making it rather difficult to believe that he didn't actually say it. In what I can only imagine was a misjudgment of trust, when questioned regarding the possibility of alien involvement in the construction of ancient Egypt, he not only confirmed this to be the case, but confessed to knowing, and I quote, there's still something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. In a previous video, I shared how the tomb of Osiris, once believed to have been a mythical god from Egyptian legend, a belief Egyptian antiquities would like to keep alive, was actually discovered recently. The tomb was found by traversing an access tunnel system just a few inches in diameter. From the moment this impossible access passage was discovered, they quietly knew they had found something amazing. The moment Egyptian authorities finally managed to get a robot with a camera into the tomb, a complete media blackout descended upon Egypt. Walls were constructed around the tomb and no information regarding the find was shared for several weeks. When the world was eventually allowed near the site, the tomb was found to have been conveniently empty. No explanation as to how grave robbers could have possibly got into the tomb has ever been produced. Was Osiris an alien? Was our previous research bang on the money? Even in Egyptian legend, the figure known as Thoth was said to have allowed beings such as Ra and Osiris to exist in our realm. Were ancient Egyptian artists accurate in their depictions of these beings as hybrids? If, as Dr. Allah Shahid states, along with ancient Egyptian literature, that there is indeed something otherworldly under the Great Pyramid, could it really be a portal? And if it is, why hide it? Regardless of what it is, they are definitely hiding something. What other worldly thing do you think is hidden under the Great Pyramid? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. Who were the ancient pharaohs of Egypt? We have postulated on many occasions that the evidence to suggest the Great Pyramids are far older than currently attested, and as such, far outdate those who academia currently claim as the builders is not only overwhelming but mounting by the day, the question as to who their constructors were remains elusive. Another enigmatic mystery still to be answered, if one goes by this premise, is who were the mysterious figures who have been found dotting the Valley of the Kings? Were these jewel-adorned mummified individuals the actual original constructors of these awe-inspiring as yet unexplained ancient ruins? Not only is there strong evidence to suggest that the Great Pyramids themselves were built with an enormous exoskeleton of blocks stretching far into the thousands of tons, but that casing stones which now encase these original blocks are indicative of no less than two later stages of building, which we believe were in an attempt to conserve that which still remains at the site. It is undoubtable that whoever accomplished the original building of the miraculous structures, for an as yet unexplained reason, had a tremendous intellect, far eclipsing that of modern man. It is interesting then to note that many of these ancient pharaohs, although rarely shared by academia, seemingly possess craniums far larger than that of our own human skulls. This extra size could be an indicator of a far greater brain mass than that of us, and thus a far greater intellect. Possibly making this mysterious group of leaders, each possessing an elongated skull, likely candidates for being able to have accomplished that which we now look upon as seemingly impossible achievements of ancient architecture. Often concealed by their headdresses, 
depicted on the many surviving statues of these individuals, which has allowed academia, and indeed the many museums who display such ancient art, to conveniently overlook that which lies beneath. Elongated skulls have been found all over the planet. Interestingly, or rather compellingly, found within close proximity to the many now unexplained ancient ruins found all over Earth. Were we visited by these beings? Subsequently, due to their enormous intellects, becoming our leaders? And due to their astonishing capabilities, once perceived by ancient man as gods? Additionally, many ancient, still surviving tribes still practice a form of head binding. The question is, where did these techniques originate from? Who inspired such practices? And were they in an attempt to replicate the appearance of the gods? Elongated skulls, clearly as a result of these practices, are also found at sites around the world. Yet these skulls are easily identified as that of humans. This due to the recognizable cranial napping or stitching of the skull, present upon all humans as a growth pattern. However, those of the Egyptian pharaohs, Peruvian elongated skulls, and a number of child sacrifices found high among the mountains of the Andes do not share these same easily identifiable, deliberate deformations. In other words, these pharaohs and other elongated skulls, concluded after in-depth analysis of their compositions, seem to have actually been their natural shape, allowing for a brain mass far insuperior to that of the human skull. Are these elongated skulls undoubtedly consisting of a far greater sized brain space found among ancient ruins we cannot replicate, merely a convenient coincidence? Or were they indeed an ancient race of beings we are yet to be made aware of by an academia clearly attempting to conceal vast portions of ancient history? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Throughout our time researching ancient antiquities, we have stumbled across many anomalies which, to this day, the questions we have raised regarding these sites have yet to be satisfactorily answered by anyone. How did ancient, seemingly post-cataclysmic civilizations accomplish such feats of ancient engineering? Not only are there countless ancient structures found on nearly every continent on Earth that are beyond modern capabilities, but the way in which they were liberated from the quarries and bedrock in which they were sourced, often many miles away, remains a burning question. Furthermore, the clues to these now lost techniques, the knowledge and indeed tools used to create these monstrous megaliths, the fingerprints of these now long forgotten activities still remain all over the hard granites once selected and used. No matter the geographical separation many of these sites share, it seems was not an issue, and they not only match, but as we have previously postulated based on said data, would appear to have been created with not only the same tools and techniques, but by a civilization whose tentacles far outstretch modern paradigms in regards to a single super-civilization having once been responsible for these extraordinary acts of ancient engineering. How can we continue to believe such sites were the work of academically shared, subsequently studied, in depth, and thus proven civilizations which we now know to have been incapable of such feats? The unfinished obelisk of Aswan, the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry, the polygonal astonishing feats of the mountaintop temples of Peru, and so on all share the same scars upon the weather-resistant rocks used in said structures. India, China, Peru, Egypt, and so on. Yet interestingly, different stone-cutting techniques are found upon different locations, yet seemingly coalesce within Aswan Quarry and other structures such as the Great Pyramids within Egypt. Diagonally cut stones, such as those within Baalbek and much further afield, are present within this quarry within Egypt. However, what makes the location of these massive pyramids special is that from the data, the evidence we have gathered, 
the structures were either built before said civilizations arrived and subsequently flourished upon our planet, but that these enormous structures were shared, possibly even an intercontinentally shared accomplishment achieved by not one, but many ancient super-civilizations, which, it would appear, were even more capable than that of modern man. These butter-cut stones, such as the techniques seemingly used upon the abandoned obelisk of Aswan, are shared with many other sites, protuberances, found within Peru and many other polygonal sites, are also present upon the pyramids, yet are seemingly much later additions. However, they are not only present on ruins around the world also, but the tool marks we have used to separate these sites are present within Egypt in abundance. The only other place we have witnessed such shared anomalies is Bazda Caves in Turkey used by us to not only identify these techniques, but to pinpoint which lost civilization were where, and, thanks to the pyramids, it would seem when. They not only share these marks, which are present all over structures across the world, but are only utilized in their fullest upon these two sites, so far discovered. Only shared at these particular sites and nowhere else found so far. However, interestingly, Baalbek seems to also share protuberances with other polygonal sites, but also possesses curious semicircular crescent-shaped tool marks across its biggest megaliths, as if a less accomplished tool than that used, we would postulate later, after these techniques were mastered, as found within Aswan, Sacsayhuaman, and many other apparently more advanced ruins found elsewhere on Earth. Who were these ancient people? How did they accomplish such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? We not only find the pursuit of answers to such questions incredibly important to the development of our knowledge in regard to our origins, but is a quest we will always find highly compelling. The ancient ruins of Egypt, regardless of their astonishing characteristics, or the often enormous megalithic building blocks used in the site's construction, are still claimed by an academia with no explanation as to how, as the work of our well-studied yet far more recent ancestors, the Egyptians. It is one of the most crucial ancient locations when it comes to exposing the conspiratorial nature of academia, a denial of the obvious by those who were faithfully tasked with explaining the origins of said sites or indeed how said sites were created. Any of these long-awaited answers, however, remain elusive. For in reality, no one knows who built the ancient pyramids of Giza, how they did it, when they did it, or indeed why. We simply cannot explain how these feats of engineering and architecture were accomplished. For although such ruins are claimed as a particular group's work, there is no logical reasoning that can be provided to confirm this claim. Additionally, there are many other, no less gigantic megalithic blocks which can be found throughout Egypt, often found used within the many temples, but also seen buried, concealed within the foundations, which make up part of the floor at the pyramid's bases. And Dendera Temple is of no exception. We have covered the temple in the past, focusing on an intriguing depiction which many have come to conclude depicts a lost lighting technology. Some individuals have now created working replicas of this intriguing device. We have also covered the steps found within the temple. These steps appear to have been melted at some point in the past, rather than simple entropy. The temple, however, possesses many more inexplicable secrets, all concealed from the majority of Earth's population by a field of study that firstly lacks any demonstrative evidence, but also due to the evidence which one can mount to support the positive past stone-cutting power technology having once existed, thus these features are effectively ignored and thus largely overlooked. Copper chisels cannot explain its existence. People who have explored the temple have found that the repeating reliefs within are perfectly symmetrical, identical in form to within millimeters of each other. The leaching of salts between surfaces are the only reasons we can see the joints in the Great Hall. Furthermore, 
Chris Dunn, a fellow antiquarian, has explored these intriguing clues within Dendera Temple previously. Not only did the precision of the carving stun Chris Dunn, but the finish upon such a brittle stone has led Chris to conclude that high technology was once utilized to create the stone carvings. Who built Dendera? What technologies were used to construct the temple? Or indeed, ancient Egypt as a whole? Dendera is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown, a now lost antiquity, one which we find highly compelling.